The Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. <laughs> the makers of Johnson's Wax, Johnson's Car New, and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coats present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with music by the King's Men and Billy Mills Orchestra. <laughs> looking woman down the street. I should add that we just happened to be going the same way. And what made me notice her first was that attractive red, white, and blue shopping cart that she wheeled along beside her. I happened to notice a package of Johnson's Wax among her purchases, and I was reminded again that in these times it's very helpful to have such a product available. In protecting your floors, furniture, and woodwork, Johnson's Wax ties in beautifully with your wartime housekeeping. It saves you work because waxed floors and furniture are easier to clean, require less dusting, and much less work at spring house cleaning. The regular use of Johnson's Wax enables you to keep up the beauty of your home with little effort and small cost. And what's more, this same Johnson's Wax polish offers protection, helps you to take better care of the things you have, not only for the duration, but for long after. and peaceful scene at 79 Wistful Vista tonight. The mistress of the house is in the living room, darning holes out of socks, as little Benny says. And just coming in the front door, as happy as a kid with a new toy, is the kid himself with a new toy, as we meet Fibber McGee and Molly. Well, McGee, home already? Yep, and I got a surprise. I bought something. For me? For both of us. Ah, this is something we've been needing for years. McGee, you bought some phonograph needles. Oh, you dark. No, 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 I didn't. Do we need phonograph needles? Do we need them? I played a Dinah Shore record last night, and she sounded like Andy Devine. <laughs> well, remind me sometime, and I'll get some. Remind you? Yeah. I've tied the string around your finger twice, and what happened? What happened? Well, the first time you bought string, <laughs> and the second time you bought lady fingers. Oh. <laughs> like Never it. mind the needles now. What do you got there? Look. Take it back. There. Heaven. See? Days. A new clock. Yeah. And take it right back. Huh? The hour hand is missing. No, 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 no. Now, that ain't a clock. It's a barometer. I've been wanting one for years. A what? A barometer. What does it do? You mean you're ignorant as to not knowing what a barometer does? <laughs> it tells the weather. Why, a captain of a ship can look at one of these things and tell right away that there's going to be a hurricane. Well, get it out of here. We'll have no hurricanes in this house. <laughs> Don't be so unlogical. Barometers don't make the weather. They just tell what it's going to be. From now on, we don't have to guess about tomorrow's weather. Well, I'm sorry to hear it. Huh? After being married to you all this time, dear, the only surprises I had left in life were tomorrow's weather. <laughs> well, be that as it may or may not be or not just the same, it's a pretty handy gadget. Well, where are you going to hang it? Well, I don't know. I was going to hang it in the dining room so as I could see what the day's weather was when I had breakfast, but... I thought better of that. Why? Well, it wouldn't be accurate in there. Temperature's too changeable on account of so much hot toast and coffee and oatmeal in the morning and cold cuts and ice cream at night. <laughs> no, I think I'll hang it up in the... Come in. Hi, kid. Oh, hi, old-timer. Hello, Mr. Old-timer. What can we do for you? Oh, I just wanted to ask the kid here if he wanted to go fishing tomorrow. How do you know the weather will be right for fishing? How do you know it won't? Well, he just got a new weather indicator, Mr. Old-timer. Yep. It prevaricates the weather. Sure it does. Scientific instrument. Very precise. No, give me that scientific ketchup, Johnny. <laughs> How can a hunk of wire and a piece of glass tell the weather? All you need is a good case of rheumatism, like I got. You know, I've heard of people telling the weather by the twinges in their bones. Ah, that's baloney. I never knew but one guy in my life who could tell the weather by his joints. Who's that? Molly's Uncle Dennis. <laughs> Every time he starts bending his elbow, we know it's going to be a damp evening. Well, how about tomorrow, 
Johnny. My bones say the weather is going to be okay for fishing. You better check it with that storm estate of yours, dearie. Okay, I will. Now, let me see. Barometric pressure. Low pressure, high pressure, in conflict with cumulus clouds over the... Huh? Oh! Oh, my gosh! What's it say, Johnny? What's it say? <laughs> no. No, on the 12th of May, that's ridiculous. It ain't ridiculous if the barometer says so. I'm sorry, old-timer. No fishing for me. Oh, uh, Homer, you're just being silly. Why it ain't any more going to snow? And don't call me Homer. No, he gave up that Homer K. Frank business, Mr. Oldtimer. Yeah. Uh, I might have knew it. He changes his personality like one of them little lizards. One of them there simoleons. <laughs> no, you don't mean a simoleon. You mean a chameleon. No, he don't, Molly. A chameleon is an actor that does funny stuff. <laughs> a comedian, Johnny. I thought a comedian was a book full of facts and figures. No, you're thinking of a compendium. Sure. I used to read it when I was a kid. Huh? The Youth Compendium. No. <laughs> that was companion. Then, Jag Nabbit, what's a simoleon? That's slang for a dollar. What? A dollar for a little piece of slang like that? I won't pay it. That's not <laughs> why he got so angry. He didn't have to pay you right away. <laughs> oh, never mind. What? <laughs> what worries me is snow tomorrow. Oh, McGee. <laughs> For goodness sakes, it isn't going to snow tomorrow. No? Why, it hasn't snowed in this part of the country on the 12th of May for a hundred years. Well, if it done it once, it can do it again. But just for fun, I'm going to check with the local weather bureau. Give me the phone. Here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me the meter. The metro. The metro. Go, the, give me the weather bureau. Huh? Oh, hi, Mert. Oh, dear. How's every little thing, Mert? Says, eh? What's say, Mert? You heard from your brother in North Africa. He knows where the Allies are going to start the invasion. Wow. How does he know that? From the way they packed him in on the boat going over, he says they must be going into Sardinia. <laughs> What's say, Mert? Yeah, pretty good. Well, I'll call him later. And hey, Mert. You better wear your overshoes tomorrow. It's going to snow. up your mind. You got so many holes in the wall now, it looks like we're living in a sponge. <laughs> okay, I just... Hey, do you know what I did? I haven't the faintest idea. And I've crossed my fingers so much, I have to signal X for victory. <laughs> what did you do? I called up the Whistle Vista Gazette and told them it was going to snow tomorrow. They were real interested. I'll bet they were. Yeah. I told them it was going to snow tomorrow, and they asked me, did I have any dope on when the world was coming to an end? <laughs> and I says, yes, I did. And they says, when? And I says, when you smart guys learn what's news and what ain't. 
They realized I had them there and hung up on me. <laughs> well, they couldn't print that it was going to snow tomorrow, even if it was, which it isn't. That's a military secret. I always thought that was a lot of malarkey, too. How can you keep the weather a secret? That's about as confidential as fried onions. <laughs> hey, how'll the barometer look here? That ought to be... Fun. No, no, McGee, not there. It's right over the radiator. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Always be fair and warmer there. Let's see. Come in. But... Hello, Abigail, darling. How do you do, Mrs. McGee? Yes, Mr. McGee. Hi, Eppity. Throw your coat on the Davenport. Take it off first, if you want to. Thank you. I just stopped by, Mrs. McGee, to remind you of my lawn party tomorrow. Oh, you will be there, won't you? Oh, I'll be there, Abigail. I love lawn parties. I have so much fun tripping over croquet arches. Mm -hmm. It'll be even tougher tomorrow, Molly. Won't be able to see the croquet arches. Why not? Snow. No. No. Oh. According to my husband, dearie, whom I married because he could sing Pretty Red Wing like nobody's business, <laughs> it's going to snow tomorrow. Snow? Oh, how utterly absurd. Well, it's practically the middle of May. Okay, okay, okay. Scoff if you want to. Be right. But when you're at your lawn party tomorrow, when you're scraping them icicles off the Chinese lanterns, remember that yes, I... Yes, he got himself a barometer, Abigail. Heretofore, he's always forecast the weather by wetting his finger and holding it up. Oh, you're just... And a... how would that forecast the weather, my dear? Oh, I... Well, just... if his finger stayed wet for 24 hours, it was raining. <laughs> and if it dried right off, the wind was blowing. And if it got numb, we were having a cold spell. <laughs> you know very well... I have often read of certain primitive types who claim to be able to foretell the weather. Children of nature, as it were. <laughs> but it's practically a lost art among civilized people. Oh, so I ain't civilized, eh? Well, when my barometer... Says... I remember when we were just children and we wanted to have a picnic, we always asked McGee if it was going to rain. And if he said yes, we went ahead with the picnic. <laughs> That's so. As I remember, My never... great grandfather had a pet chimpanzee he kept in the attic who always knew when it was raining. <laughs> we discovered later that the roof leaked. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Just because the guy reads the scientific information. Well, I certainly shan't worry about it snowing on my lawn party tomorrow, my dear. Mr. McGee may consider himself a weather prophet, but I have seen forecasters on an old washing machine that were more efficient and did less squeaking. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you something, and Mrs. And furthermore, I... Mr. McGee, if it does snow tomorrow, I shall be here with a shovel and clean off your sidewalks. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Ought to make her shovel him off with a hat pin. <laughs> that old gravy boat. That's what a guy gets when he tries to do people favors. Reach out a helping hand and ten to one somebody slams the door on your Now, fingers. now, take it easy, dearie. Uh, After all, snow on the cross of May is a little ridiculous. Ridiculous my clavicle. That's what I get for trying to argue with a couple of women. What do women know about science? What about Madame Curie? Well, what did she ever do? She discovered radium. No, what if she did? It's a nuisance. Turn it on and all you hear is a lot of bum gags. <laughs> Listen, I didn't say radio, I said radium. Well, gee whiz, I don't see... Believe me, this is the last time I offer free advice to people that are too ungrateful to use it. If I ever... Hello, folks. Hello, Mr. Wilcox. Hi, Junior. If I ever go one step out of my way to help anybody again, I... Oh, hi, Wilcox. When did you come in? <laughs> what are you screaming about, pal? Ah, oh, the ungratitude of people. Mrs. Uppington wouldn't believe him when he told her it was going to snow tomorrow, Mr. Wilcox. No. No. Tomorrow. <laughs> oh, you too, huh? Another septic. <laughs> well, this is what always happens when a guy's a little ahead of his time, that's all. Listen, you're about six months ahead of yours, dearie, with that snow business. Yeah. I can just imagine what happens when Edison comes rushing in and hollers that he's invented moving pictures. Some lint head probably sneers and says, oh, yeah? So who's going to play Alice Fay, Lillian Russell? <laughs> Oh, calm down, Fibber. Take it easy. Well, what makes you think it's going to snow tomorrow? Well, he's got a new barometer, Mr. Wilcox. Yeah. He says a ship's captain can take one look at it and tell if he's going to get a load of sugar cane. I didn't say sugar cane. I said hurricane. Oh, yeah. That's right. Well, look. <laughs> look, I wish you'd take a look at that barometer again, pal. You're making a bum out of lots of smart car owners. <laughs> Why, said little Fibber, with good humor in his merry blue eyes and all over his vest. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, gee, this is the time of the year when they all get out Johnson's car new to polish up the old buzz for summer and protect it against dust and rain and sunshine and road film. Yeah, so take back your weather, man. <laughs> Listen, Crawford, I didn't...
didn't make this barometer. I bought it. I don't tell it what to say. I just read it. It says snow tomorrow. Is that my fault? What do you want me to do? Kick science in the teeth? Look, friend, have you set this barometer for altitude? For what? Altitude. It has to be regulated for whatever part of the country it's used in. Wistful Vista is 800 feet above sea level. So what? I don't care if this is Death Valley. If it's going to snow, it's going to snow. <laughs> well, that may be, pal, but I'd rather bet on the instincts of a smart car owner than a palooka with a dime store barometer. Ah. Why, this is the time of year thousands of motorists have been waiting for, so they could go out and give the finish on their cars a new lease on life and beauty with car new. But I'm telling you... Thousands of them, pal, eager to get out into the warm sunshine and spend a pleasant half hour simply applying car new, letting it dry, and wiping it off with a soft cloth, getting a brilliant protective polish in one easy application. And now you come along and say it's going to snow. Well, he really believes it, too, Mr. Wilcox. All right, all right, I won't say another word. Everybody else is smarter than what I am, anyway. I go, go on home, Junior. Go home. Go home and get out the red flannels and the hot water bag and the galoshes. Because by the 22 twin trumpets of Toscanini, it's going to snow tomorrow. <laughs> okay, pal, okay. I'll get ready for a blizzard. And if it snows, I'll be over here the first thing in the morning and shovel off your walk. <laughs> no. <laughs> You don't seem to be convincing anybody, dearie. Who cares? But I'm surprised at you, Molly. You ought to know by this time when I'm right and when I'm wrong. Oh, I do, dearie, I do. You do? Well, yes. that's unsatisfactory. Hey, where are you going? I'm going up and put the extra blankets in the storeroom. Huh? Now the summer's here, we won't need them anymore. I'll be down again in just a minute. Hmm, her too. Oh, well, she's been a good kid. Just don't understand scientific stuff. Now let's see. Where'd I better put this brown? Oh, here's a good place. Oh, no, 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 no. That ain't right either. Too near the door. Get a draft on this is better way over here by the... Come in, come in, come in. Hi, mister. Oh, it's you, is it, sis? Now, don't bother me. I'm busy. Doing what, mister? Hmm? What you doing, hmm? What you? I'm putting up a barometer. Well, I thought maybe you... Hmm? <laughs> I says I'm putting up a barometer. B-E-R-O-M-M-I-T-E-R. Barometer. <laughs> this thing here. What is it? It's a barometer. What's it for? It tells the weather. Tells the weather what? It tells what the weather is going to be. Oh. <laughs> I bet you don't, I bet you. Huh? On account of if the weather don't know what it's going to be, nobody can tell because if you know what the weather is and the weather don't, it won't know whether the weather is... <laughs> <laughs> See, this is all kind of silly, isn't it? I'll say it is. Well, gee, Mr. No Fooling, what is that thing for? Hmm. It's to make little girls ask questions. Okay, you ready? Ready for what? <laughs> the first question? Look, sis, I didn't mean that the I... The question is, why does Hitler wear that ridiculous little mustache? Oh, that's a very silly question, and I don't see... Well, because a mustache is hair, and a hair is a rabbit, and a rabbit has a short tail, and a short tail is easily told, and so is a bell, and a bell is in the belfry, and so are bats. And bats are used for baseball, and baseball is played on a diamond. And a diamond is full of cats, and so is a cow, and a cow is beef, and beef is better when a tongue, and so is Hitler. <laughs> the king's men sing steamboat bill down the mississippi team the whip or will commanded by the pilot mr steamboat bill the owners gave him orders on the strict qt we're up to beat the present record of the robert e lee just beat up the fire let the old smoke roll burn up all the cargo if we run out of coal if we don't beat that record billy told the mate Send my mail and care of Peter at the Golden Gate. Steamboat Bill, steaming down the Mississippi. Steamboat Bill, a mighty man was he. Steamboat Bill, steaming down the Mississippi. Gonna beat the record of the Robert E. Lee. On board there was a gambling man from Louisville. Who tried to get a bet against the Whipper Will. Billy fight the roll and really was a bear. The boiler it exploded, blew them up in the air. The gambler said to Billy as they left the wreck. Home in bed. When she received the telegram, I told her Billy was dead. She said to all the children, 
This is Miss Oglethorpe at the Wistful Vista Instrument Company. We sold you a barometer today. Oh, yeah. If you'll bring it in tomorrow, Mr. McGee, we'll be glad to exchange it for you. Huh? The one you have was a display model and has just a dummy dial. So sorry. Good night. Oh, my gosh. A dummy barometer. And I've been telling everybody... And did the telephone ring, dearie? Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it was a a mistake. (laughs) Yeah, mistake. Well, it's a fine time to get a wrong number. Yeah. Well, come to bed now. Okay. You have to get up early and watch the snow flowers, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. McGee? McGee, wake up. There's somebody at the door downstairs. <laughs> What? What? What time is it? I don't know, but it's daylight. Ah. Hurry up, McGee. Don't see who it is. It must be important. Uh, okay. As soon as I get my slippers on. No, no, no. Not those. Those are my mules. Here's your slippers. Let me take the mules. I want to kick the teeth out of whoever's hammering at the door. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. What's the idea? Look, Mr. McGee, it's snowing. Yes, when do they come? Got an extra shovel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Molly! Molly, I was right! Oh, boy, what a barometer. If it works this good now, wait till the worst get in it. Hey, Molly! <laughs> cleaning this week, we'll be glad to hear a letter we just received from a lady in Michigan. It'll be especially interesting to those of you who do part of your own decorating, such as cleaning painted walls in your kitchen or bathroom. Here's the letter. Being spring house cleaning time, I thought some of your other listeners would be interested in the wonderful use I have found for Johnson's Glow Coat. My kitchen and bathroom walls are ivory enamel. After I wash them, I go over them with a coat of Glow Coat. This brings out a wonderful gloss, protects the paint, and makes cleaning much easier. Well, now, there's a suggestion that really will save you many hours and lots of work. If you're in the midst of your spring house cleaning now, remember this extra protective use for Johnson's Glow Coat on your kitchen and bathroom walls in addition to its primary use on your floor. McGee, you know you're famous? (laughs) Everybody's talking about you. The newspaper called and... Wanted an interview, and <laughs> one of the airlines wants to hire you as a weather expert. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, it's nothing that any red-blooded American boy couldn't have done. <laughs> <laughs> I was just lucky, I guess. Lucky nothing. You're smart, McGee. And you know what? Huh? I just looked at that barometer again, and it still says snow. <laughs> I'm going to uh, get out my fur coat. I'm going to get out. What? Uh, never mind. Good night. Good night, <laughs> all. Characters of the old-timer and Wallace Whistle heard on this program were played by Bill Thompson. This is Marla Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry, inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program has reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company.